Something we run into very commonly in the layouts we create is how do we overlap items on top of each other. So here's an example. We have a planet and we have a rocket that is flying above it. And if you inspect it, you can see that the bounding box of the planet is pretty large. It's taking up this entire square region. And then our rocket though is much smaller and it is placed on top of it. And so what we're gonna do is look at the handful of CSS techniques that we need to learn to be able to pull this off for not just an example like this, but for any other situation where we need to have one, two, or multiple elements essentially overlapping on top of each other. Actually, one element overlapping doesn't really make a lot of sense, so ignore that part. Okay, so by default, our HTML elements have very strict rules on how their layouts interact with each other. Well, strict is not the right word, but it's very comprehensive. And a lot of it depends on whether the elements we're dealing with are considered block level or inline. And a block level element will take up all the horizontal space available and will stack on vertically on top of each other, kind of like as shown on the visual on the left where we have all these boxes, one, two, three, four, all placed on top of each other nicely. Inline elements try to match the size of the content they're representing. So they don't take up all the space available and then each subsequent inline element ends up you know, appearing to its right or left depending on the language orientation. And I'm gonna ignore sub variations like inline block, but the behavior of all of these are very similar. The gist is that in block, you take up space vertically, in inline, you take up the space horizontally. And the way we can override this though, is by changing the display property. We can have display set to block, or we can change to inline or inline block or any other format that is there. Now the thing is, this doesn't really solve our problem because what we want is to not stack items on top of each other. We want to overlap them where the same element and another element are all essentially says sharing the same Z index space. And so the solution here, there are actually many solutions. The one we're going to employ is to using the grid and grid to the rescue here. And with grid, we know that we can define rows and columns. We can have individual items appear in each row and column very nicely. Now, what if we decided to say, instead of all these items appearing in their own row and column, we have them all appear in a single location, like for example, X. And when we do that, you can see that everything is jumbled up. All the items end up appearing in the same location. Now, the thing is, that's actually a very desirable behavior because by specifying the row number and the column number, we can precisely position our elements into any grid cell that is currently available. And by having our elements that we want to overlap appear in the same cell, we end up getting the same effect that we want, which is having these elements be overlapping where you can see them from a Z index point of view. And the game plan is this. By using grid template rows and grid template columns, we can define the cells in our grid and we specify that on the parent. Each child element can specify which cell in the grid it wants to live in by specifying a grid area value. And if children specify the same cell, they overlap, they stack. And the Z index of the stacked overlapped items can be adjusted by setting the Z index property. We'll look into all of that in a few moments. So time to write some code to turn all the visuals and text into things that we can actually use. So you can follow along by going to this URL. I have the URL posted in the description as well. It's a short link, it's bit.ly slash Krupa overlapping. Okay, so what we have here is a version of the example we talked started with earlier, except that items are not overlapping. And before we get into making them overlap, let's get take a quick look at the code that we're dealing with. At a high level, we have a parent element with a class value of main, it's a div, and it has two child elements, two images, the planet and the rocket, which correspond to the SVG images that display the planet and the rocket conveniently you see on screen. And the styling we have right now is really just to help make sure we have an appropriate sizing for the planet. We see the black background with the corner radius of a dark gray. And, the, and you can see that if you look at the dot main style rule or the plus style rules for the planet and the rocket elements as well, nothing too exciting going on here. And we're gonna fix that though. What we're gonna do first is specify the grid on our parent main element. And right now we don't have a grid specified. So we're gonna do display grid to ensure that the layout approach used by this parent and any children will be adhering to grid values. And specify the, the arrangement of the items. How many cells will there need to be? In the example in earlier, we had a three by three grid, which means there are nine cells. For what we're trying to do here, which is just have elements overlap in a single region, one cell is enough. So I'm going to go ahead and do grid template columns. So I have one FR, 
Similarly, we we'll do grid template rows, one FR. Now, you might be wondering, isn't the default is actually one cell? That is correct, but it's always good to be explicit because you never know when you might want to override it in a media query, for example, and having an unspecified default value just adds to confusion. And if you can avoid confusion, why not? And the last thing I'm gonna do is add place item center to make sure the children of this parent are going to be vertically and horizontally centered. All right, so if I refresh this page right now, you're gonna see the behavior that is a default when we do something like this, when we have a grid and we have two columns and rows. These items are now stacked on top of each other, and that's because they don't know they need to be in the same cell. So let's go ahead and fix that by going to main planet. And what I'm gonna do is do grid area, and with the grid area, you can specify the exact coordinate of the cell you want to go to and how many regions of rows and cells you want to take. By default, though, all we want to provide are essentially the equivalent of X and Y coordinates. So I'm going to do 1 slash 1, which means it's going to be in the only cell that is currently available. So I did that for the planet, and I did that also for the rocket element as well. And so if I refresh the page now, you'll now see that a rocket is perfectly centered on top of the planet and they're actually overlapping on top of each other, which is exactly the kind of behavior that we want. Now, the thing I mentioned earlier is that the default arrangement of what is on top and what's on bottom is the order it's available in HTML. So you can see the rocket is available after the planet in how we define our image elements, it's available first. To override this behavior, you need to specify a Z index. So just for kicks, I'm going to Z index on the planet of 10. And when I refresh the page, you're going to see that the planet now is visible. The rocket is not invisible. It just happens to be behind the particular planet here. So I can fix that by doing a Z index of 11. When I do that, you'll see that the rocket is now visible again. So very easy way of being able to adjust the ordering without having to tweak anything in your HTML itself. Now, just before we call it a day, in the example that I had earlier, I had the rocket actually animating. So if you want to bear with me for just a few more moments, let me go ahead and make the animation work as well. So I'm going to specify the animation. I'm going to use shorthand. I'm not a huge fan of shorthand because it's often a little bit mysterious, but I'll do that right now. So I'm going to do ease in out and infinite, which means that we're going to have some keyframes. They're going to be named bouncing it's going to have five seconds using an ease in out timing function to speed up and slow down and it'll run forever so add keyframes bouncing and let me go ahead and specify the various states i want to be in so zero percent that seems like a good starting point 50 percent midpoint and then 100 percent and the thing i will be modifying in each stage is the transform so transform translate 10 pixels and 20 pixels. I'm going to copy this so I don't have to copy this over and over again. And at the 50% mark, let's make it zero pixels and zero pixels. So whatever initial you know, translation it had, it'll go back to its starting origin, which is center here. And I'm going to translate back to 10 pixel and 20 pixel. So we push the page now. You can now see that the rocket is now nicely sliding up and down or at an angle actually given the, the direction that we're currently dealing with. So there you have it, a, a very quick overview of how we can overlap items, a challenging problem back in the day before we had elements like grid and even flexbox to a certain degree, where it required a certain number of, I'm going to say gymnastics to get our elements to overlap nicely on top of each other. And a lot of them had their own shortcomings and side effects, which weren't always great. But here we have a guilt-free solution using the grid and making sure by setting the grid areas to specify the exact row and column you want elements to be in, the same row and column values for multiple elements will cause them to overlap by default. And so if you have any questions, please post in the forums if you know to get quick help from me and many other web developers who are interested in web development front end topics. Subscribe to the newsletter to be seeing interesting updates from me on topics around technology, design, business, just interesting things that are not too heavy in terms of technical content that goes on the site, but just funny enough for you to be able to consume on your phone. Follow me at Kurupa on Twitter and any other social media network where it looks like I'm the person behind that name. So follow me there for bite-sized updates on things. And lastly, I read a lot of books of all the content you see here. They often find their way into really professionally written, edited books by big publishers. So link below, check those out as well. And with that, I will see you all next time.